Hello there, in this video I'm going to very quickly show you the settings that I use to get maximum depth out of the E-Track. It probably is not the definitive settings and certainly not the settings that would work on every piece of land, but these are generally what I use. I'm generally digging coins up to around about a foot deep or so, and that's pretty deep. So it certainly seems to impress a lot of the US viewers, but um, there's a heck of a lot of coins down there, it's just finding them. So. Hopefully by using these settings, you could maybe give them a go and try and find some deep coins. Right, first of all, this is the pattern I use. It's just got a little bit of discrimination down this bottom right hand corner to knock out a bit of iron. I generally have it set on plus three sensitivity. If the machine starts to freak out a little bit, all I do is just reduce sensitivity often keeping it on automatic runs very stable on there but you notice the sensitivity overall has gone down to 16 if the ground's stable enough you can run it a little bit over the recommended right the most important things are to set the appropriate discrimination I've got different modes in here that's the one I use at the minute, with a little bit of discrimination. There is other ones. There's a pretty good one from Mine Lab. This comes pre programmed with the E track. That knocks out a hell of a lot of iron. It's basically like a park pattern. Your modern coins tend to fall along here. You're generally hunting for shallow stuff. But for the purposes of this, we're looking deep, so I'm going to put it back on my mode. This pattern is actually the Roman site pattern, which is downloadable from the Mine Lab website. So the pattern is half of it. You want to knock out bits of iron so you're not picking up all that deep old iron. The most important part, however, is um, the discrimination obviously that's the pattern sensitivity you've got that pretty much set I've explained that audio it doesn't really matter about the audio although some people say that the response if it's smooth you get a little bit deeper I actually prefer it either normal or smooth sometimes change backwards and forwards but um, Ten of a reasonably high volume gain. Just differentiates between the deeper and shallower targets. Volume limit bang up to the top. Threshold level. There you can hear it there. When you've got the earphones in, you can hear it at a much lower level and you would just set that to whatever your ears liked. I have it barely audible, so you can hear even the slightest little pip from a deep target. Tone ID, I tend to have four. Multi is a little bit noisy, especially if there's a lot of trash in the ground. I generally opt for ferrous audio instead of conduct. Conduct to me is no good for kind of hunting very very deep. There's a lot of people do prefer it though, it's all just down to personal choice. Variability of tones, well I mean that, you know, whatever suits. I tend to have it fairly high. Limits again high. Recovery deep, obviously you're hunting deep so I tend to have it on. Recovery fast in good ground I would generally have that off. If the ground was quite trashy I would put that on. If there's a lot of targets near to each other it's always best to have the recovery fast on and therefore it picks up a target, drops it, picks up another one, drops it. If you have it off and if there's multiple targets quite close together they can all just kind of bleed into one. Trash density, I generally have set high. Ground, difficult. 
neutral if the ground is really really good but I tend to just stay difficult contrast matter of personal opinion depends how bright the day is I tend not to rely on the screen too much but um, you might want to darken it down a bit or you might want to lighten it a bit doesn't really matter as long as you can see the screen that's the most important thing pinpoint mode normal sizing I tend to just go normal sensitivity on I like to know what the grounds doing show mode info on off I tend to have it on display timeout on I don't like it to keep a hold of um, previous target ID and you don't want to do that just yet master reset these are various other patterns that I might use generally if I'm going deep I would use either of the top two they basically just discriminate against a little bit of iron the bottom corner of the screen there these ones with more discrimination I would tend to use in parks and then I would rec um, turn recovery deep off and recovery fast on because I'm hunting shallower but that's what I use and the most important thing as soon as you start detecting or should I say before you start detecting is to press that button there noise cancel I would lift the coil up and down up and down up and down between ground level and a foot basically just pad it up and down off the ground that seems to get a little bit more sensitivity out of the machine selected channel 7 there that's the quietest channel um, I would tend to do a noise cancel every half an hour or so of course a little bit of discrimination helps knock out the iron some people use all metal I like to use a little bit of discrimination having a big coil helps immeasurably as well the difference between this fella and the standard 11 inch coil is quite noticeable um, the 11 inch coil I think I found coins down to about 8-9 inches or so I tend not to go super slow but with this fella I can maintain a reasonable speed and still find very deep targets this one is an SAF coil from DTEC and it's 18 inches by 15 inches it probably looks bigger than that on here because I'm holding it towards the camera it's a big coil I tend to go reasonably slow maybe about that sort of speed maybe it's two and a half three seconds each way if there's a lot of trash in the ground I would go even slower and I would always keep the coil very low to the ground slow and low if you just blast about like that with a big coil it's really gonna make your arms and shoulder ache be gentle with it I've actually got a harness with a bungee cord that attaches to here and that takes most of the weight off the coil makes it a hell of a lot easier to swing this big fella another thing to bear in mind when this locates a target at depth the ID might not be perfect it's a long way down there might be a lot of interference the big coil to me doesn't give as good a target ID as a small coil this is really for coverage and depth so with that in mind instead of digging a little hole I might go a bit bigger even with the very good pinpointing feature on the e-track it sometimes doesn't pinpoint perfectly if there's a coin on an angle or on its end and by going that bit bigger for a deep target you run much less chance of hitting the coin with a speed that's it reasonably simple obviously having a good detector helps to go deep but even with a cheap detector and by cheap I mean two or three hundred quid if you keep the coil flat to the ground skimming along the top of the ground in a nice wide arc and take your time 
you're going to pick up a lot more targets than people using expensive detectors who just fly around your bound to. You'd be covering more ground thoroughly and you'd be allowing the machine time to pick up targets, decide whether it wants them or not, drop them, pick another one up. Someone who's flying around, it's just going to be a deafening cacophony of sound in their ears. The last thing you want is a nightmare of sound because you, your brain simply can't process the information quick enough. So by keeping it slow and low, the machine does all the work for you. Hope you found that helpful. I know when I started with the E-Track, yeah, I just couldn't work out what the hell to do. I was copying people's patterns and so on, but I had no idea what the settings on the machine did. So hopefully, me explaining what I use to get maximum depth, you'll be able to understand it. Any questions, just stick them in the comments. Thanks for watching.